hey guys welcome back to my channel this is learn to sew with nani and my name is nani you're welcome thank you for subscribing to this channel if you already subscribed and if you're yet to subscribe please turn on the notification bell subscribe like comment share okay and today i would be showing us how to make a trouser a pants female pants and for this um trouser you need three very important measurements alongside other measurements and that is the waistline the crouch that's the waist is from the shoulder to the waist as in where you have your exact waistline the narrowest part of the waist then we have the crouch from the waist to the crouch and i've labeled it on my mannequin just for easy explanation now the reason i said the waistline is very important is because you need to take the actual waistline whether you want it to to be a low waist trouser or a high waist trouser so wherever you want the trouser to start from it's where you start taking the craft measurement from then you also need the tie circumference or the lap and it's taken across the hip area from the lap area then you take it high up to the hip bone per se yes to just get a very perfect fit so you can see the way the curve um the paper is slanted on the mannequin okay so i'm just trying to use my tape to demonstrate that a little i'm videoing and also um, taking the measurement so forgive me pardon me if the, if the camera is shaking the camera is shaking so pardon me i'm recording with one hand and trying to show the measurement with one hand all right so you also need the round knee the round um ankle the waist to the knee waist to the ankle measurements all right so the measurements you need i'll go over them again first you need three important measurements that would help you derive your trouser accurately then other measurements alongside with it so you need the waist circumference and your waistline that's from the waist to the crouch you need the crouch and that measurement is taken or directly on your client and if you are ashamed or shy to take to measure your client the way i explained it on the mannequin it means you have to tell your client to sit on a plain surface and you take the measurement from her waist where she actually wants the trouser to step from to the top of the chair all right so on my pattern paper i've marked the waistline the hip line the crouch line the knee line and the ankle line now on the crouch line okay i'm marking half of the tie measurement remember we took the round tie measurement so i'm marking half of that as a tie divided into two now not into four okay so the tie divided into two and i'm marking that on the crouch okay so on the hip line i'll be marking the hip measurement divided by four hip divided by four the tie was divided by two but the hip is to be divided by four so i'm marking the hip measurement divided by four now if you're marking directly in your fabric i would advise you add your allowances so to the crouch to the crouch depth where you marked your tie measurement i suggest you add one inch or two inches one and a half whatever you said to work on and same for the hip measurement but i am drafting a pattern particularly a pattern so i will transfer the pattern to my fabric and add my allowances to my fabric but either way in case you're making directly in the fabric i want to suggest you add your allowances all right so having done that i'm also uh, marking the hip measurement on the crouch line just to enable me get a straight line from the crouch to the waistline now from the waist from the hip line just take your curve ruler and make a curve from the hip line to the crouch and that's going to give you that arc for your trouser remember it's not supposed to be a straight line just so that you'll be able to move you know work freely if it's not a straight line your trouser would tear the moment you raise your leg up all right so that point is the crouch i'm just labeling it so that it gets clearer then that's the hip the knee and the ankle all right so having measured that i'm going to get the distance from the center front to the crouch i'll be divided by two and i have seven now remember my tie measurement i divided it into two so to get this measurement i'm marking you have to divide 
the time measurement into another two okay so whatever you get to mark that my time measurement is 28 divided by 2 gave me 14 so now i'll be marking half of 14 which is 7 from the center front so i've marked that on the waistline on the hip line the crouch the knee the ankle and i'm going to just extend that line into a straight line i don't want to go over that again for clarity purposes now remember i said you mark the tie half of the side measurement on the crouch line now after making that your arc and every and the arc yes so you want to measure quarter of the of the tie measurement okay from the center front you mark exactly that on the waistline the hip the crouch and to the other lines below to get a straight line now this line is called the dart line it's called the getter line it's called the craze line it's called um the tailor line it's been called all sorts of names to different people so whichever one is familiar to you please make do with it all right so i hope i have not confused you there but if you have any questions remember i would be in the comment section to answer all your questions all right so this straight line like i said is called the getter line the crease line, the dark line, the tailor line, whatever suits your preference, okay? So now we've gotten this line and this, it means that your trouser will start to take shape now because with this line, you can actually shape in your trouser. All right, so we'll move to the knee measurement. Now, the knee circumference, actually, you divide that by four. Now, whatever figure you get, you mark it on both sides of the ghetto line, okay, of that, that line, like I said. It's called that line, ghetto line, whatever. So, remember, the knee circumference divided by four, whatever you get, you mark on the two sides of the tailor line. The same thing applies to the ankle circumference. Divide that by four and mark that on the two sides so for instance if my hip my knee circumference is 20 i'll divide that by four to give me five so i'll mark five inches on the left side and also five inches on the right side okay so i'll connect from the crouch to where i have that five inches on the knee line then also connect to where i have the appropriate inch for the ankle line so the same to the other side from that arc you connect it to the other five inches on the knee line then also connect it down to your ankle divided by four the other half that you created on the other side of the that line and that shaping your trouser so you can see that our trouser is beginning to take shape all right so if you take a look at the trouser you see that it has taken shape we've taken care of the leg area the crouch area so the next thing to do is to take in the waist measurement all right so the waist measurement is to be divided by four so whatever you have as a waist measurement mark it from the line okay from that straight line we marked from the hip part okay so whatever you have as your waist mine is 40 41 divided by four gives me 10.25 so i've marked that that there so i'll going i would use my curve ruler to you know make a curve from the waistline to the hip line okay remember you make a curve normal basic skirt basic trouser whatever you do you just make an arc from the waistline to the hip line and that shapes the hip area the waist and the hip area so you can see that right now your trouser has taken shape like it is almost done like if you just want a basic trouser then that is it now so like i said that center line is called the center line the ghetto line the dart line so on that line that is where you take your dart so for my front dart i'm coming down by five inches then i'll mark half inches on both sides of the dart line okay then i would make i'll connect my dart line in form of a triangle like the normal dart okay and that takes care of your dad now it means that 
you would also be at adding your that allowance okay so if you have space there maybe your waist is smaller okay you can always i already have one inch extra okay from my center front okay so that you remember to always add back your that allowance okay pattern or not add back your that allowance you can always add the same allowance to the fabric okay now so i'm adding half inch round around the crotch area down to the top to the waist because i'm actually going to be joining the two sides of the trouser the trouser is going to have four sides two sides in front and the two sides at the back so for the front side i'm going to join the two sides together around the crotch region so i'll be needing that seam allowance of half inch there now pattern or no pattern you should add this allowance so that by the time you transfer to your fabric you know that you're only adding your seam allowances and that makes the job easier all right people so i'm make, making that curve right now to serve as my seam allowance to join the crouch area all right so this is your trouser pattern it's as easy as anything you can think of it is super easy so so easy all right so by the time you cut this pattern out and you know place on your fabric you're just going to be adding your seam allowances round um on the fabric okay you can add your one inch one and a half two inches okay remember just work with what suits you so you just add the allowances on the along uh, along the knee line and the ankle line you're going to add the allowances on the both sides okay of the pattern you remember it has two sides the left and the right so you're going to add your allowances on the two sides but for the waist and the hip you just add them on the center front okay and not on the crouch area now for you to cut the hem of your trouser you have to fold the seam allowance as a hemming allowance to turn the trouser you can have to fold it in so that when you cut you don't have a shortage around that point it's very 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 essential very important okay so i'm cutting through and i've gotten to the waistline yeah my trouser is getting ready okay so i've gotten through to the other parts then true all right people so today's video is a bit tacky yes i would use the word tacky my camera stand got broken and for a while i've not been able to shoot a video so i had to improvise and keep my camera on something on a chair actually to take this video so pardon me if it doesn't come the way you expected i'll try to get a new camera stand so that i'll shoot more amazing videos for you guys but right now i just have to make do with what i have all right so the front pattern is sorted out then we move over to the back now there are some adjustments that we made to the front pattern now because we were using the front as pattern to make the back i wouldn't make the adjustments now after cutting the back pattern i will also now show us those little adjustments so in case you're getting scared is she done is she going to do this do that just chill i'll sort that out now if you have another pattern paper you can actually you know start making your back bodies your back trouser bodies is actually very easier but i'll just be using my leftover pattern paper because i've actually run out of um, pattern papers and this would help me one manage my pattern paper secondly because i'm making a pattern so by the time i place this okay i'm just going to use my paper tape to join it then draft my back pattern on it it means that after drafting my back pattern while cutting i would cut the back pattern first after cutting the back pattern i'll now remove the tape okay to separate the scrap of paper from the front body from the front trouser block then cut the front trouser block i hope that explains it okay this method helps you manage your pattern paper in case you have other projects i've run out of i have like 
three four five remaining and i also have some projects to do so i wouldn't want to waste all of that on one thousand when we can actually you know uh, do something to save the day all right okay so i'm taping the paper tape round just to hold the front trouser block to the remaining pattern paper now for you to do this you have to make sure that the piece of paper that you're using for the back is actually wider than the front pattern by at least three inches and it's also supposed to be higher by at least two inches now i would make those adjustments please don't crucify me yet i would make those adjustments all right so my pattern paper here for the back is bigger than the front like i said by at least three inches and this is for the bomb rise for the back we have our bomb at the back and some of us have really massive behinds while some of us are blessed with small so if your behind is that big okay you want to make it up to three inches so it accommodates your butt now if it's smaller you can make it two inches if it's really small one and a half or one inch all right so i've extended all my lines to the back pattern now to the crouch depth i'm going to be adding three inches like i said this is for a plus size queen so i've added three inches to that now remember you add your allowances to the back pattern when you're making a trouser you add your allowances to the back now so because um this is a tutorial and i want everybody to actually follow up beginners advanced intermediate whatever you are so they can follow up so i'll be adding my allowances i wouldn't just transfer the pattern to the fabric now okay that was the initial plan but because i'm also considering that some people might be new to this i wouldn't know how to transfer um the pattern to the fabric and add the allowances so i'm going to be adding my allowances at the back okay so for a trouser the allowances are always at the back now i'll be after adding my three inches at the crouch area on the knee line i would add two inches or two and a half okay on the ankle line i'll also add the same two or two and a half and that is because we'll be joining four sides okay you join the crouch area with half inch on the both sides making it one inch and for the back you also join another half inch on both sides making it another one inch and that's two inches so i'm adding two inches probably two and a half inches just for a bit of ease okay so the extra half inch is for ease allowance so remember i added three inches to the crouch two and a half inches to the knee and to the ankle all right so now i've extended my crouch area so remember you just take the curve from the three inches and take it directly to the waistline okay i'm sorry my camera isn't capturing that but i would still highlight the camera to explain it better okay so you make a curve from the direct waistline to the crouch okay now this is also done if you want to um transfer the allowance of the fabric so when you do this it just means because you've added the allowance for the knee and the ankle you just come to the waist and the hip line and just add your one inch two inches allowance whatever it is you want okay like i'm explaining it now so whatever allowance you want to add you can now add when you place this on your fabric okay now if you don't want to do that you want to mark everything on your pattern then transfer to your fabric it means at the crouch area you're going to be adding your allowance so if it's one inch one and a half two inches you do that so on the waistline i'll be marking one and a half okay or even two inches that way it's for something you're doing for the first time for a first time project i suggest you add two inches allowance so that you can always make any adjustments it's always better to 
have an excess than to have a shortage so on the hip and on the waistline i've added two inches as you can see i've ruled that line up and that would serve as my allowance so then i would connect to the three inches extension so you see that curve there that just serves for the back pattern all right so that is well explained if you have any questions any confusion remember i would be in the comment section to answer all your questions on this topic all right so i'm cutting out the sides now So that's to the crouch line then i'll extend it to the hip the hip and to the waistline okay so i'm also using this opportunity to you know talk to you if you have any specific tutorial you want me to do you can always drop it on the comment section and i could do that as the next tutorial Alright, so for the sides, you want to make sure you have exactly the same thing on the other side, okay? The side that is facing you, you want to make sure you follow the same curve on the front pattern. Just make sure it has the same curve. Cut out any excesses around that area. And the back pattern is sorted out. It's so easy. Okay, so when I want to make, I just cut. You can see the below the fabric is just there. There's nothing holding it. I just use the paper tape to hold it. So it means when I want to cut on my fabric, I would cut the back pattern first. Then after that, I'll take out um, the front pattern from it and make the and then cut the front pattern on my fabric. Okay, so all right, guys. So I hope that is easily explained. Now I've adjusted my camera, so I want to show us what I did to the crowd area, how I added my allowance and cut out the crowd area in case. You didn't see that because my camera was not actually showing that. Alright, so like I said, from we extended the crouch by three inches for the back. Okay. So from there you just make sure you make a line, a curve from the actual waistline to the crouch line. Now that takes care of that if you don't want to add your allowances. Okay. Now so if you want to now add the side seam allowance okay it means you're going to be adding two inches one inch or one and a half <clears throat> excuse me whatever it is you want to make as your allowance so i added two two inches two inches on the hip and on the waist and curved it out all right so that was what i did there now remember i said the back pattern is always higher than the front pattern okay and i didn't have enough paper then so i've added an extra on it just to take care of that remember i, I pleaded with you not to say find me yet that i'll make those adjustments and i'm here doing that all right so the back pattern is usually higher than the front pattern by at least two inches okay and I, like i explained this is also for the bum rise remember we also have the bum at the back okay we need to take care of it so that when you stand or sit your bum will not be showing so from that two inches will connect directly to the waistline now you take that two inches up from the crouch area all right so from there you can also make this line curved okay you know the human body is not a straight line okay so you can decide to make that a curved line now for the front pattern the front pattern is also lower than the back so on the crouch side of the front pattern i'll come down by one inch and also extend it to the end of the pattern that's at the other part of the waistline okay so the back is low is higher by two inches and the front is lower by one inch okay so like i said the human body is not a straight line it, the human especially the african woman is curvy so you don't want to make straight lines so i'm using the curved part of my ruler to you you know curve that part out that straight line i made there I'm just using the curvy part of my ruler to curve that out. Alright, so even for the the back part, okay, I'll just make sure I place the curvy part of my ruler and just make a curve there. So it's a bit more curved now than just having a straight line. Remember, the typical woman is not straight. We are curvy. 
the, the African woman is mm, covia. All right, so I'm just cutting through that COVID line I made. Okay, so you can see it's on the curve, has a bit of curve, unlike the other first straight and very sharp line. Then by the time I now want to cut out the front pattern, I'll just you know also reduce it by one.